Hello and welcome to another episode of Bible Talks with Grace Unfolds, a spiritual revival ministry initiative. Today we're going to talk about uh, one of the Bible characters whom most of us know, but we're going to see uh, how interesting we can bring our analysis uh, on that particular person. And it's none other than David, whom you can find in the book of Samuel. Hallelujah. So I'm Reggie. I'm Leo. And welcome to Bible Talks. So Leo, um, let's talk about David, um, who David is. So David is the second king of Israel. And um, he is a chosen one from God. He's the apple of the eye. He's a prophet. And his Jesus' ancestry is linked directly to David. And we're going to find out more on who this person is. Who is David? So Leo, can you tell me what is the striking factors that you find in David and share it with our audience? Definitely. See, um, in in Bible, uh, we see many characters in the Bible, right? Um, there are some characters we have uh, so much of so details, mm-hmm. but there are some characters we have just one or two verses. That's it. But David is one particular person uh, whom we know right from his childhood. How he was chosen, even when he was not there. When Samuel came to anoint the second king, just as you said, he is the second king. Mm-hmm. And then we all know until his death. Mm-hmm. And uh, the beauty of David is. Uh, the story of david doesn't end there mm-hmm. when when david dies uh it doesn't end what i see something that is fascinating about david is mm-hmm. his continuation and his significance mm-hmm. in the new testament really you find them in the new testament yeah definitely uh there are there are many many places okay. where jesus himself mm-hmm. talks about david that's how important uh david is and um like you said uh, is jesus himself is the ancestor of david right that's right uh, it comes into the bloodline of david and very many verses mm-hmm. even we, we read from the letters of paul even mm-hmm. even uh, when apostle paul peter says uh, in the acts of the apostle chapter 2 and many other places mm-hmm. they, jesus is called the seed of david it's, that's right yeah it's very, as important as like uh, when 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 in the garden of eden which he calls talks mm-hmm. i'll put a uh, uh, enmity between you and the seed of the woman right mm-hmm. that very seed mm-hmm. is through this calling of seed of david that's something uh, david has been carried out and mm-hmm. uh, if you see one thing that i like about david in new testament is mm-hmm. um, he is a man mm-hmm. uh, who has been revealed as a prophet okay in in, in bible uh, we know David as a worship mm-hmm. leader. Uh, we know his reverence mm-hmm. and, and and this uh, eagerness or what I would say uh, is love mm-hmm. to worship the Lord, mm-hmm. even in spite of being a king. And he is a king. He, he won many wars, but Bible calls him David uh, as a as a prophet because he has prophesied most of or many of the uh, messianic prophecies mm-hmm. like. Um, the, the words that Jesus uses on the cross of Calvary, uh, my Lord, my Lord, why are we forsaken me? has been prophesied by David. That's interesting, actually, right? yeah. And, and and the words that uh, Jesus says, um, where he goes on to say, uh, my Lord will say to my Lord, I will sit, I'll make you to sit at my right hand and mm-hmm. make your enemies as a footstool. These are the prophecies that's been spoken by the prophet David Himself. in Psalms. Yeah. Right? Uh, that's an interesting fact rather than all the characters that we know mm-hmm. that he's a king, he's a, mm-hmm. a, a worship leader, he's a mighty king, all that. Mm-hmm. The second thing that I really like about David, uh, when other than the word prophet, prophet is, um, what David talks about righteousness. Mm-hmm. See, one thing that David likes of uh, telling to people, even though I might be a king, mm-hmm. right? I'm 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 the Lord of all mm. the people. Still, his dependence on God is something that is second to none to anyone you see in the Bible. He's always dependent on God in everything, and he says, "My righteousness comes from God, not because that is interesting. not because he's king and he he, he can be uh, mm. self righteous. Mm-hmm. There's no one going to mm. question David, 
but he says my righteousness comes from god and that's where i see david as a foreshadow of a lord it's interesting you said about righteousness so that is something uh, which we all need to understand right no matter how much a person is anointed um, or gifted uh, by the holy spirit none of us can claim that we are righteous because of our deeds and our acts exactly. the righteousness comes from the lord and we are clothed in his righteousness uh, because we are not right and david has actually given us an example exactly. um, even before our lord jesus could come and yeah. so yeah that's brilliantly we, now we have actually. the finished work of the cross we have the blood yes. we have the understanding but yes. see the david uh, understanding even before all this yeah. and that's why i see the foreshadow of jesus uh in self and and that's the uh, character of G- david that i really like it's interesting um, i'm glad you pointed this out actually yeah. what what do you like uh, about david or how you see david as uh, the man in the bible okay uh, so I, i like david there are a few three things or four things which i like to talk about uh, about david as a character is um like you said he's a king he was the second king of israel and uh, all of the wars that he led he was victorious about it and um, he uh, had the wealth uh, and the the god's favor was upon him uh, so he had all the splendor and wealth that he had and he is one of the important person in the world because he is leading the holy nation of israel uh, i would say I, i'm not exaggerating when i said he's one of the important person in the world because of the people who he's leading. Right. Now, him being so important, uh when they took the ark of the covenant, right? Uh David didn't say, "Okay, get my robe, the finest of the robe and put some gold and diamond on it. Is my crown shiny enough?" And uh okay, so I would go in front and my leading men would be behind me. followed by the uh the uh so the remaining of highest officials and then we take the ark of the covenant and we will show the people of Israel how we've successfully bringing him uh bringing the ark of the covenant uh, in, in, into Israel uh, that was never the case right what happened is ark of the covenant goes in front David forgets who he is and dances in the joy of the Lord and the Holy Spirit is in him and he dances in joy. What a beautiful uh, a, 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 a statement that has been put forth for David actually. How many of us today can forget our social status? can forget the 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 titles and the tags that we have, our education level that we have and and our ego and pride in which we have or 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 on our knowledge or our intellectual capacity and then go in front of the lord in such humility like david and say god you are my everything and be in the presence of the lord and be joyful in the presence of the lord being being a head of a nation exactly and being the king yes. second to none and being that Yes exactly what what a what a beautiful uh thing as which he showed for us as an example so that's one thing i really really love about david the second thing which i like about david is his brotherhood now um is when i want to bring in jonathan and the david's relationship right how their friendship was so um tight packed or tight knit and they bring in the lord as a witness the minute you bring lord in your as a witness there is holiness that comes into that relationship and um, how that relationship saved each other actually how now i i know we're talking about david david here but i want to bring in jonathan just for a minute into the picture now for jonathan technically he should be the second in line for king as a king so he should be him being the son of saul he should be the king but Jonathan understands who David is he understands that the anointed one from the lord is david and he in his faithfulness respects that of the decision of the lord and he humbles himself and and uh, and, and gets into a relationship with david in such uh, impact that they save each other even though when he did not believe that his father could kill him and once he understood yes his father is behind david for his life how jonathan saves his life and how they 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 have that that conversation with david and jonathan talks about the tight 
broship and that friendship that they have which is beautiful i think uh, you know all of us should have that one particular friend who have our back uh, you out know of, out of all the favorite verses that i love mm-hmm. i love this verse where um, david remembers jonathan the love for you uh-huh. is more than that of uh, love for a woman and uh-huh. he he, he uh, amplifies that love mm-hmm. right more than anything that he could have had in his entire life uh-huh. and that's the relationship that they that have that he has that's well, that's quite interesting actually it's, it's a beautiful friendship that's been put forth um, yeah so that's the second thing which i like about david the third thing which i like about david is how he's being hunted by saul um uh, where david is supposed to be in the kingdom as an anointed one in the palace being treated royally instead he's being chased in wilderness and he's running for his life and this goes on for a long time and then there were not once but two opportunities which um, david gets uh, where he had the opportunity to kill saul right but what i like about david is how even though saul tried killing him and was in vengeance and his all his life the bible quotes saying Saul uh, Saul was um David's or David was Saul's enemy the other way around so David was Saul's enemy all through his life right. that's what the bible says right. now even though uh, Saul saw David as an enemy and was after his life David having the opportunity twice to kill him he does not touch Saul and the only reason he quotes is because he's an anointed one i will not touch him honoring. let the lord be the judge honoring the servants of god exactly honoring the servants of god and he said let the lord judge him but it's not up to me to judge how many of us like you said honoring the servants of god how many of us can do the same thing we may have been hurt by a priest or a nun or a religious person we may have been hurt by a man of god or a woman of god and or maybe they are your enemy in the, in the case of Saul and David even though if they are not for you how many of us can have the same character as David and say it is not for me to judge that priest it is not for me to judge that sister or that religious person it is not for me to judge that man of god or woman of god because that belongs to god can we surrender that to god and that hurt to god because obviously there might have been a hurt and there might be you may be in the right side as how david was but can we uh give it to the lord and asking god to judge it and god to intervene than us taking the uh, things in our hand when when paul says uh, in the book of colossians i i i have the mind of christ right mm. david already has that Uh, exactly. and that's the reason he sees uh, the anointed as God's child exactly and he doesn't uh, lay his hand on him uh, even even to go on to say i will never even even the very fact that he punished the person who mm-hmm. killed Saul later uh, it, that shows what how he respects even after his he death said. that's true that's true so it's very important how we he he brings in a beautiful example on how we need to treat an anointed person now the anointed person in their human weakness may walk away from god but that is not our job to judge that person nor make a comment or a, or or pass on the in the social media or wherever we can about how bad that person is if that anointed person has walked away from god i think as a christian our job is to pray for that person and leave it as is and ask god to judge and if that person has hurt us directly uh then again we ask god to be the judge what a wonderful example what we david has given one act of honoring the uh, anointed, anointed one of uh, the lord mm-hmm. it takes care of the two commandments that god says the greatest of all honor your love your god mm-hmm. and love love your neighbor as yourself you see mm-hmm. he says is loving god and that's why he respects all uh-huh. and then he loves his neighbor just as he himself and david fruitfully and uh, so so skillfully fulfills mm-hmm. that command in just one act uh, what you just pointed out that is brilliantly put <laughs> i mean i think it's really brilliantly put that is so true and he did honor these two commandments and how david gets blessed by the lord for this now 
these are three, three things which I like about David. The fourth one which I'm going to talk about is the, um, with Betshaba, I mean, there is always that talk, but I'm not going to talk about Betshaba or, or the sin that, or the, uh, the murder or the adultery. What I want to talk about is the responsibility and how important it is. See, when David was supposed to go into war with Ammonites, as a king, he was supposed to go into the war and lead the people of Israel. But instead, he stays back in the palace. And that is where where, you, his, where he lacked in responsibility, where he was supposed to go, he didn't go. And that gave, gave like a leeway for the devil to, uh, you know, for a temptation. That is when he actually saw Petshava. That's where the temptation began. And that's where uh, the act of adultery and the murder yeah. that happened, right? So it is very important that when there is a responsibility given by God, it is very important that we fulfill the responsibility, be it big or small. The minute we slack in that responsibility, it gives a doorway for the devil to enter in and, you know, put a perfect lay for the temptation to happen. So that's one thing which which I would take from the whole picture of David and Bathsheba, is when you are supposed to be responsible, do that in your dressing then be lazy about it or or taking a break when god didn't ask you to take a break when you know when you have to take a break when god allows we take a break but not when we have a responsibility but god can bring good even out of evil so um what i like in the entire episode of of this is how he repented so much he gave a beautiful verse for all of us to actually follow he said lord he make me as white as snow what a beautiful statement. He gives a, a beautiful line for us to follow saying, Lord, I have sinned. Let your precious blood wash me and make me as white as snow. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. So that's the whole thing which I liked about the whole statement. A beautiful thing and it's quite famous as well. Many of us might be using it. But that's what I like about yeah. this whole episode. In the, in the same thing, um, in this incident, what mm-hmm. I see uh, the outcome as we all, we all are being human. We, mm-hmm. we fall uh, yes. in our weaknesses. But one thing uh, that we all have to learn from David is mm-hmm. confessing that I'm weak to the Lord. True, true. Right? Uh, David being David, mm-hmm. the king, mm-hmm. and uh, when when the act of uh, his sin was happening, is the uh, king. Yes. And there is absolutely no one and is the strongest. And mm-hmm. even his army is winning. Mm-hmm. Uh but to go and to tell to the Lord that I'm weak mm-hmm. and accepting this Can weakness. I? See, the weakness, what David mm-hmm. teaches each one of us, is not mm-hmm. the weakness that you have, mm-hmm. something that you are not possessing, mm-hmm. but the weaknesses of not having God in you. Right? Interestingly put, that's, actually. That's the weakness that we mm-hmm. have to see. When you don't have God in mm-hmm. you and you are not after God's mm-hmm. will, you are absolutely vulnerable and weak. True. And that's what David acknowledges quickly. And one thing that we always have to see uh, in life, how I, I personally take it in my life, is uh, acknowledging that weakness of God is not being with me or me. God is always there, mm-hmm. but it is me who is going away from mm-hmm. God and I, I feel vulnerable and that's where I sin, right? Uh, David gives us that value of understanding our weaknesses and going and like you said mm. lord uh, cleanse me with this uh, that i may be whiter than snow mm. uh, it's because he understood the weakness and then it goes to god lord now you mm. strengthen me with that issue, so mm. that i can be stronger like how you want it that's yeah. something that i always fascinate about uh, david and that in the whole incident right that's so true though uh, how god uh, how i mean we all fall into sin Nobody can say I'm righteous, like how David said, my righteousness comes from the Lord. We all sin and we all fall into temptation. But to acknowledge that weakness and going to the Lord and surrendering it is most is so beautiful. And David gave a wonderful example on that. Absolutely. So, yeah, um, it, I think David has been a wonderful example for all of us. And we there are so many things which we can learn from David. Uh, and the beauty about the Bible is it, it, it gives a black and white picture of his entire history, right? The good things which he did and the bad as well and how he learned from it. Um, 
so yeah david is is one of the man which where there are few so many things which we can follow from and if there's something with a striking example which you or which you like about david uh, put in the comments below and we will have a look and we can have a chat about that and if you like our video and this talk um, click on the subscribe button and click on like and share and subscribe so that you can have more videos from us thank you very much Let's go on.